On January 14th, the WHO announced a virus outbreak in the Kagera region of northwest Tanzania with nine cases and eight deaths. This virus is spread to humans by fruit bats and can be passed between people through human-to-human -human contact. It causes severe viral hemorrhagic fever with a death rate ranging from 23% to 90%. The Marburg virus belongs to the phylovirus family, along with Ebola. It causes a severe and often deadly illness called Marburg virus disease, which is nearly identical to Ebola virus disease in symptoms. Both humans and non-human primates can be affected by the Marburg virus. In this video, we'll discuss everything you need to know about Marburg virus, including the symptoms and causes of this virus how it's transmitted and who is most at risk, and how to manage and treat it if it spreads in your area. Before we deep dive into the video, make sure to like this video. Your support helps us reach more people who need this information. So what exactly is Marburg virus? Marburg virus and Ravenvirus, both from the Orthomarburg virus species, cause Marburg virus disease. The disease has a fatality rate of up to 88%, but early and proper treatment can significantly lower this rate. Both viruses belong to the Filoviridae family, which also includes the Orthoebola virus genus. While caused by different viruses, Ebola and Marburg diseases are clinically similar. Both are rare, but can lead to outbreaks with high fatality rates. Marburg virus was first detected in 1967 after two simultaneous outbreaks in Marburg and Frankfurt in Germany and in Belgrade, Serbia. These outbreaks were linked to laboratory work with African green monkeys, Cercopithecus ethiops, imported from Uganda. Since then, outbreaks and sporadic cases have been reported in Angola, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Equatorial Guinea, Ghana, Guinea, Kenya, South Africa, in a person who recently traveled to Zimbabwe, Tanzania, and Uganda. In 2008, two cases were reported in travelers who had visited a cave with Rusetus aegyptiacus bat colonies in Uganda. In September 2024, Rwanda reported its first outbreak, and in January 2025, Tanzania declared another outbreak. Human Marburg virus infection typically starts from prolonged exposure to mines or caves where Rosetta's fruit bat colonies live. Once the virus enters the human population, it spreads through direct contact with the blood, secretions, organs, or other bodily fluids of infected individuals or with surfaces and materials like bedding and clothing contaminated by these fluids. The virus can be transmitted through broken skin or mucous membranes. Healthcare workers are often at risk of infection while treating Marburg virus patients, especially when infection control measures are not strictly followed. Transmission through contaminated needles or injection equipment can lead to more severe disease, faster deterioration, and possibly a higher fatality rate. Burial ceremonies where people come into direct contact with the deceased's body can also spread the virus. People cannot spread the virus before showing symptoms and they remain infectious as long as their blood contains the virus. The incubation period ranges from 2 to 21 days. Marburg virus starts suddenly with high fever, severe headache, and extreme fatigue. Muscle aches and pains are also common. By the third day, patients may experience severe watery diarrhea, abdominal pain, cramping, nausea, and vomiting. A non-itchy rash can appear between two and seven days after symptoms begin. Around day five, patients may develop bleeding symptoms, such as fresh blood in vomit and stool, and bleeding from the nose, gums, and vagina. Bleeding can also occur at sites where intravenous access is given. The central nervous system can be affected, leading to confusion, irritability, and aggression. In fatal cases, death usually occurs between eight and nine days after symptom onset, often following severe blood loss and shock. It can be challenging to clinically distinguish Marburg virus disease from other infections like malaria, typhoid fever, shigellosis, meningitis, and other viral hemorrhagic fevers. 
To confirm that symptoms are due to Marburg virus infection, the following diagnostic methods are used. Antibody capture enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, antigen capture detection tests, reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction assay, virus isolation through cell culture in high security labs. Samples from patients pose a significant biohazard risk. Testing of non-inactivated samples must be done in maximum containment labs. When transporting these samples nationally or internationally, they should be packed using a triple packaging system to ensure safety. Early intensive supportive care, including rehydration and treatment of specific symptoms, can improve the chances of survival. Currently, there are no approved vaccines or antiviral treatments for Marburg virus disease. However, there are candidate monoclonal antibodies, antivirals, and vaccines that are being evaluated in clinical trials. Rosettus aegyptiacus bats are considered the natural hosts of Marburg virus, but they show no apparent symptoms of the disease. Because of this, the geographic distribution of Marburg virus may overlap with the range of these fruit bats. Experimental studies with pigs have shown that they are susceptible to filovirus infections and can spread the virus. As a result, pigs may act as potential amplifier hosts during Marburg virus outbreaks. It is important to implement precautionary measures on pig farms in Africa to prevent pigs from becoming infected through contact with fruit bats. Community engagement is crucial for successfully controlling outbreaks of Marburg virus disease, MVD. Outbreak control depends on a variety of interventions, such as case management, surveillance and contact tracing, good laboratory services, infection prevention and control in healthcare settings, safe and dignified burials, and social mobilization. Raising awareness about the risk factors for Marburg virus and the protective measures individuals can take is an effective way to reduce human transmission. Key risk reduction messages should focus on bat to human transmission. To reduce the risk from mines or caves inhabited by fruit bat colonies, individuals visiting or working in these areas should wear gloves, masks, and other protective clothing. During outbreaks, all animal products, blood and meat, should be thoroughly cooked before consumption. Human to human transmission. To reduce the risk of transmission from infected patients, people should avoid close physical contact with MVD patients, especially with their body fluids. Suspected or confirmed MVD patients should be isolated in designated treatment centers to prevent transmission at home. Community education. Affected communities should ensure that people are well informed about MVD and the measures needed to control the outbreak. Outbreak containment measures include safe and dignified burials of the deceased, identifying and monitoring individuals who may have had contact with infected persons for 21 days, separating the healthy from the sick to prevent further spread, providing care to confirmed patients, maintaining good hygiene and a clean environment. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with others who might benefit from this information. And if you have any questions or thoughts, leave a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe for more updates and insights on health-related topics. Stay safe and we'll see you in the next video.